Hello everyone, this is Gator13 taking over LEGO Free by Eleven's channel for a new CMF Figures review video. Hey everybody, it's me, Lego Free by Eleven L, and as you can tell, once again I'm joined by my good friend Geert to talk about the second series of collectible Harry Potter minifigures from 2020. We're a bit late to the game, but hopefully you'll enjoy the video just the same. We had so much fun making the last one, so we wanted to do it again now. Now that we've gotten so many Harry Potter minifigures in the past few years, we can't really compare them to old ones like we did last time, so we're mostly going to talk about the minifigures as they are, but throw in a few comparisons when fitting. But enough talking, let's get this video going. The first minifigure is surprisingly Harry Potter. We do of course have a quadrillion Harrys at this point, and for such a simple version, I really like it. I love how much detail they put into such a simple outfit. The legs in particular are lovely, and extremely useful for all sorts of minifigures. I like that LEGO has started to print on shoes on more minifigures, something I've been doing on my custom minifigures for quite a while now. The torso is no less nice and very useful for other themes, especially LEGO City. The head and hair combo is alright and works for a movie depiction of Harry Potter from the Half-Blood Prince, but it's not something I would personally ever use. That's fine. Lastly, the new print and color for the advanced potion making book is super awesome and super useful. Now Albus Dumbledore is of course a figure that we had a lot in LEGO over the years, but this one is quite the update. The colors and the overall design are epic, I feel like this is what we wanted from the 2018 Great Hall set. The robes look really good, and although they're not the best for animation, I still really like the colors and the printing. The new Fox is such a welcome update, I mean, the 2002 one was really nostalgic, but way too big, and unfortunately that's the only version we ever had. N no, 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 no other versions. Never. The hat and hair combo are also great and the only minor complaint I would say is that the hair is white and I know what they were going for, Richard Harris's Dumbledore has probably more white than grey hair, but I would have loved to be able to mix and match the new and old figures in the other outfits with this Dumbledore, which I guess you can't do, but as Dumbledore himself would have said, Alas, heel wax. Nevertheless, seeing as everything else is so great on this figure, I can't really complain because it's one of my absolute favorites and you might as well keep him the way he is. Hermione is depicting the same Hapla Prince scene as Harry and once again, it's a lovely figure. The hair is awesome and in my opinion the perfect one for Hermione. The head is honestly much better than I expected. I might still prefer the 2018 CMF one but this one is really up there. Yeah, it's probably the best Hermione we've ever gotten. Not to mention, I think she looks the best like Emma Watson so far. Absolutely. The torso and legs are wonderful just like on Harry, and probably even more so in this case. The amount of detail is just incredible. From what I've heard from other Harry Potter fans, they really dislike the inclusions of these outfits for Ron, Harry and Hermione. And I get that on paper it seems like an awful choice, but in reality I think they're just absolutely amazing looking figures, and probably some of my favorites. <laughs> you just say that because Lego didn't screw over your Rita Skeeter or Department of Mystery series Black, one of your other custom minifigures. I mean, god damn. Anyway, Ron Weasley is of course the last of the trio and also kicking the Hogsmeade outfit from Hapla Prince. I really like the head and I think it captures Rupert Grint nicely. The hair works quite well too, it's actually the one that I'll be using in the upcoming Order of the Phoenix animations. Uh, whenever these are gonna come out. <laughs> but I'm not the biggest fan of the outfit, I have to say, but it's still nice to get some arm printing and not just plain legs for once, so kudos to Lego for that. And lastly, for the accessories, uh, this new Butter Bear is awesome, and I'm really glad that he and Hermione got it so that we can get several, and I will hopefully see loads of it again in future sets. This was a really surprising version of Luna. LEGO just keeps amazing me with what characters and outfits they'll make. In the past few years they've definitely made some characters I never thought they would, so that's awesome. The line had had us of course to start the show, and it looks really nice. We've both tried to achieve something like this throughout the years with varying levels of success. It's great to finally have something official. And good. And now I just have to make an eagle version. 
I don't know why, but I don't feel as fondly for this outfit as the trios. The level of detail is still amazing, but somehow I just don't like it as much. But I might play around with it and I'll probably find a place for it eventually. As an alternative, they also include this hairpiece, and I don't really know why they went back to the 2010 hair. I personally like the 2018 hair better, which they've also used in other 2020 sets, so it's a bit confusing. But I know you like this one better. It is confusing indeed, but it's nice to see that it's officially acceptable to use this one again. Gripbook is a character we've never technically gotten in LEGO before, and this is depicting his appearance in Deathly Hallows, which makes sense. But we have had some goblins. This is such a needed update from the molded heads they've been using since uh, 2002, I think it was, with the first Gringot set. Making the ears a part of the hair is such a great idea, it makes it a lot more versatile for making custom goblins. The head looks really good too, I like what they did with the facial expression, it really makes the character look like the one in the film. And so does the torso and the arm printing, which is such nice details. Overall, it's a 10 out of 10 minifigure. But oh shit, it gets better! That moment when the minifigure is so good and still gets overshadowed by this one accessory. Finally, we have an actual sort of Gryffindor and oh my fucking god, is it wonderful! The duo molding with the rubies looks stunning and the overall shape is just so great. I mean, it's much better than anything else that we have it in the past and it's such a beautiful thing. Lily is also new in LEGO form and overall I'm pretty happy with it. The printing looks good, though I would have preferred a cloth skirt piece like we saw a few times in the last series, because it just doesn't look like she's wearing a dress. The hair piece is a little boring, but honestly it works fine. The baby hairy piece is cute I guess, but I don't really like it. It's kind of obvious that they only printed the H on there to make it apparent that it's actually hairy and not just a random baby and it just makes it less versatile so I'd probably have preferred it without the H. Lastly, the face. First of all, she looks way too old in my opinion. Seeing as Lily and James are supposed to be 21 when they die, it just feels off to me. I get that the actors in the movies are a lot older than that, but for me it just doesn't work. Second, I wish they included a scared expression, now that the only scene we actually know about with Lily is when she dies. So, yeah. As with Lily, we've never gotten James in Lego form before, unless you count the apparitions in the Mirror of Arizet. It's overall a well-designed minifigure, but it's not doing much for me. I do think him and Lily are somewhat a wasted spot, and would it be nicer to get somewhere else? But then again, where would you put those if not in the CMF? The head is good, and I agree with Lucas though that the age and scared expression are a bit lacking here. One thing that baffles me though is uh, the fact that they give him reddish brown hair instead of black. I know it's more movie accurate, but it's just like what we talked about in the last video about Hagrid. It just doesn't feel right, however accurate it may be. It's great to get the dark red scarf, which I'm sure will be very useful for a lot of things, and likewise is the printed tile, which looks perfect. Funny that they released two of these same portraits in one year, like especially when this one is so much better than the one we get in the Private Drive set. This next minifigure is depicting Ginny in her dress from the Slug Club Christmas party. This is an interesting outfit to get for Ginny, but not one that I personally care too much about. I can still appreciate how lovely the minifigure looks though. The hair is a brand new one and it looks great. I hope they will eventually introduce it in other colors. The face looks proper and so does the dress, though I would probably have preferred a skirt piece out of cloth. Last, the ice cream glass looks really good, and it also comes in the diagonally set, but only in a transparent orange color, so it's really nice to get it in this clear color in such a cheap way. Fred and George Weasley we've gotten before, but this new update is really lovely. However, I think it's a bit sad that a slot is somewhat wasted on twins because the figures are so much alike. The faces are also identical to the new diagonally set, I've heard some people complain about their facial designs being a bit too cartoony. I for one selfishly love them. They look exactly how I pictured them when I read the books and they're also really useful expressions for stop motion animations. The accessories here are great too. The new Marauders map looks awesome and so does Fred's suitcase, although less useful. And the new hat and hair piece are a lovely new addition. The next minifigure is Bellatrix Lestrange. 
I really like this Azkaban version of her and I wanted to do it myself many years ago but I just never really got around to it. So I'm really happy to get this minifigure. The head is so much better than the one in the 2020 set. Actually everything's better because that minifigure was a real letdown, especially compared to the 2010 one. The face looks menacing which is appropriate and the design of the dress is also just spot on. I also really like this printed tile she comes with so it's overall just really great stuff. Kingsley Shacklebolt, definitely one of the about time minifigures and now we finally have this fan favorite as a Lego minifigure. The new hat piece is fantastic and just looks perfect on him. The overall design is quite good although fairly simple but I find it weird that they use this new cloth robe instead of printing them seeing as they haven't done anything like this in the other Harry Potter minifigures so far. It also doesn't really drape down the figure in a pleasing way so it looks a bit off. Aside from that I really like the figure and I'm so glad that we finally got it. Myrtle is a character that I've wanted for a while and I think many people have and this is perfect. I don't really see what they could do better. I really like the worn down robes she's wearing and her overall ghostly appearance just really works for me. The only thing I dislike is not so much on this figure but on Nearly Headless Nick who is the only other ghost character we've gotten in the Harry Potter line. They don't really work together because the style and colors are very different. I think this is a problem we've seen a lot in the Harry Potter line since 2018. Everything kind of works well in a vacuum, but there's just no real consistency throughout the minifigures and styles and everything. I don't know, it's just weird to me. I know this is also a problem in the movies, but it just doesn't work. But I digress. The new hair is lovely. The double-sided head is fitting with both a sad and a mad expression. And the diary pre-destruction is also very great to get because we've only gotten the destroyed one. <laughs> Professor Sprout has also finally got an update. And what a lovely update it is. I think we both agree that this is one of the best, if not the best, minifigure in the entire series. Absolutely. It's probably, it's no, it's definitely my favorite figure of the entire series. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. First of all, the much, much needed new hat and hair and earmuffs combo is just phenomenal. I'm really glad that LEGO clearly watched our last video and stopped using the Witch and Wizards hat because it's just way too outdated at this point. The printing for the dress is also super detailed and one of the things we both forgot to mention earlier is in this series compared to the first one, every minifigure who has this newer dress piece actually also has printing on the back of it. Great to see LEGO improving this over the last series because it just looks so much better. Probably my favorite thing about this figure is the small green leaves on her collar. It just gives the figure so much visual interest and it just looks fantastic. The Mandrake is the same style as in the Astronomy Tower set, just with a slightly different print. 50 points for Hufflepuff! This is my favorite version of Never Long Bottom, which we have seen quite a few times before, even in the previous CMF series. It just looks so perfect with the head and the hair. The robes, on the other hand, I mean, they're really good, no question, but they really look like the one Hermione was wearing in the first series, although not entirely identical. I still think LEGO could have put in just a tiny bit more effort on those. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. I make custom minifigures of all the Gryffindor outfits that we've ever gotten, but I don't really see a point in this because it's just so similar to Hermione. Another great thing about this minifigure though is the fantastic inclusion of the Monster Book of Monsters. We've only seen it once in 2004 I think it was and this is so, so much better. I really like what they've done with the front cover of the book. This new piece makes everything so much more accurate and also so useful for animation. Well, that's it come to an end of our review of the CMF2 series of Harry Potter. So we both really like this new series and we think LEGO did an amazing job coming up with some fantastic additions and defendable variants. Ever since the first leaks, we knew we had to make another video together. Yeah, it's just been so fun to talk about LEGO, Harry Potter and minifigures, especially because we've both been so busy over the last year. So we haven't talked as much as we used to. So just sitting down and making a video together has been awesome. Definitely. It truly really was. And it's also just great to see that the Harry Potter line is still going strong after almost three years of new sets and it doesn't really seem to be slowing down in 2021 so a lot of great stuff is hopefully coming soon and maybe some more videos. Hopefully and hopefully everybody already knows your channel but if they haven't seen you before where, where can they where can they find you? Well they can find me on YouTube at my channel Gatos13 there's tons of Lego Harry Potter stuff on there so feel free to check it out. 
I can't promise that there's gonna be new stuff coming in very soon, but I will try to get back to work once I've got more time and finish school, so stay tuned. Yeah, definitely go check him out. And also, you can go check out my Fligger on Instagram if you want to see some stuff I've done outside of YouTube. Yeah, go check it out. It's really great stuff, really great stuff on there. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and stay tuned for more videos, hopefully, hopefully, coming soon. So thanks for watching. LEGO 3 by 11L and Gators 13 signing out. Yeah.